In this video, I will focus on the workflow of a model-based calculation using Revit 2018 and Sigma estimates. From starting up a Sigma library based on experience prices, I will use the red price book from Molio. Through type coding and the creation of the 5D calculation model, ending up updating the Revit model with data from the 5D model and sending work hours to project. It's important to have the latest software installed. Enter your name and a valid school email to receive links to the latest software and activation keys. You will now receive an email with links to the newest software available. Download the software and install Sigma Enterprise and use the activation code to activate the software. After completing the installation, you can install Sigma Revit integration and Molio price books. Remember to shut down Revit before installing the integration. Use the links in the email to update already existing software. Next time Revit is opened, you should now see Sigma Estimates menu. So now let's get started. Open Sigma and start up a new project. Save this as a library file. It is recommended that you create a new library for each new project. Let's start by creating the cost breakdown structure we want for our project. Here I have Molio structure in mind, which is structured by SFB classification. If you want to rename the document name, you can right click and rename and enter a new document name. Having the cost breakdown structure ready, we can now go to the libraries and open the red Molio price book. Locate a specific building component and drag it to our own customized library. Now go through the price book and find other useful building components and complete the library. As mentioned earlier, this video will give you a quick guide to the workflow in general. A natural next step would be to make sure that the building components contain what they should. If we look at this floor structure, we will see that it does not contain the surface itself. This can be added by opening the blue price book and finding the substrate for the floor and the floor itself and then add them to the building component. Since we have modified the building component, it would be good practice to change the name and number since the structure has changed. Save the price book and you can now close the blue Molio price book. If you take an overview of our price book, you'll see a very high price on our ground floor building component. And that is because we changed this and you'll see that the quantity is set to 200 instead of one. So change this to one and we've finished doing our library. So you can save it, but leave it open and we'll then move into Revit. Open your Revit model and make sure that your Sigma library that we made before is uh, still open. 
So go to a 3D view and let's start by creating a very nice overview of our building. So a way to do that is to select some different components and then create the section view of uh, our building. In a previous video, I have shown how to integrate the building component journal from Excel and into Revit. In the video, I use the keynote parameter and because of that, I will not use that now. So instead, I will let Sigma integration create two new parameters for the mapping between the two platforms. Under connect settings and configuration, we'll change the object type parameter to Sigma type code and element parameter to Sigma instance code. So let's start the 5D type coding. Select an element in your Revit model. Start the 5D type coding. And since the price book is open underneath, you can look up in this table and find the correct building component and apply it. Select another component, for example, this inner wall. And select it and the mapping is made. In these examples, you'll see that the unit is in the price book is square meter and the quantity in your Revit model is uh, area. As a quality insurance, you'll see that when we turn this on and off, you'll see which element is a part of our calculation and uh, which is not. So if you uncheck that and then just continue until every object in your Revit model is disappeared or hidden, then you know that you have every component in your calculation. But when it comes to foundation, you'll see that foundation is not square meter, but length. So before we apply foundation, we need to change the quantity to length and the unit to meter and then apply and then say yes to change the unit from square meter to length. Again, when we're finished, you can see what is a part of this calculation and what is not. So when you're finished, simply close down the 5D type coding dialog. We're now ready to send information to the calculation. So we could just say that we want to have all elements in the model, but since we only have for now only roofs and walls, I'll narrow this down to those two uh, elements or categories. Um, so I select walls and roofs. Click next to see the quantity breakdown structure and everything is ready and set to go. So OK to this and yes to update the calculation with our library. And that will give us our calculation and you'll see that there is a link a live link between our calculation and our Revit model. So as soon as I select all walls, you'll see that the Revit model will update. I can open the cost breakdown structure and select foundations, for example, and the foundation will highlight in the model. Normally it's necessary to add other expenses to our calculation. So for example, if we would like to add um, fees, um, building site expenses, stuff like that, um, we can add those expenses to our calculation.
And when you're finished doing that, you can save your calculation and move back into Revit. In Revit, we can pretend that we would like to add some more building components to our calculation. So I can take, for example, the floor that we made before. I know this is a petition floor, so it's not on the ground floor, but never mind. So I apply this to my calculation as well. And we can add a few windows as well. And now I would like to update the existing calculation. So in connect settings, we need to go to advanced settings and say that we want to update the existing Revit or sorry, Sigma file. Now we have added windows and floors. So I'll add that category as well and press OK. And OK. And then from the menu, we click update to 5D model. And we will now see that our calculation is updated with the, the new elements that we have added. The integration between Revit and Sigma can go both ways. So if you want to have information from your calculation and into Revit, you can add custom uh, columns as I show here. For example, if you would like to have the CCS code coming from our calculation and into Revit, we can add that column in our Sigma calculation. We can save our calculation. And then when we move into Revit, we can define which sigma field should be mapped with uh, a specific parameter in our Revit model. So for example, if we take a look at this external wall that we have here, you'll see that for now the keynote, no, sorry, um, the type code, parameter value is um, not existing at the moment. So we can change that by going into update from 5D model. And then we can say that the information will come from our calculation. And the Sigma field is this CCS Bügningsdale. And it should be mapped with the Revit parameter type code. And that will update our Revit model with information coming from our Sigma calculation. My closing comment will be that all the data can be transferred into, for example, Microsoft project. Having all information about labor, duration, etc.